Hello everybody! Today is April 24th, 2019. 69 degrees Fahrenheit on a spring day. Today is Wednesday and I am going to be walking from the financial district to Chinatown. So this is a very historical area, a lot to cover here. To the right is the Federal Hall National Monument. This is where George Washington took the oath of office to become the first president of the United States. You can see a handsome statue of him here. And on April 30th, 1789, that is the New York Stock Exchange. And this is the Morgan Building, where J.P. Morgan famously came out of the front doors to save the stock market from crashing. He became the bankster who saved America. So actually there's a lot of security here. In order to go into the New York Stock Exchange you need to register as a guest or have the proper credentials. Actually the stock exchange is more of a facade than anything because most of the trading is done in New Jersey as well as other places around New York City. So I'm going to be heading north on Broad Street. It's a very historical street. You can even see some of the uh, cobblestones here. Here is TJ Maxx. Right now it is around 5 o'clock p.m. so many people are getting off work right now. You might see a lot of banksters and other people who work down here in nice fancy suits although that culture is kind of disappearing now I'm trying to get a good camera angle of this building underneath the scaffolding this is the equitable building at 120 Broadway It's 40 stories tall, located uh, in the financial district, as I said. And it was the largest office building in the world by floor area in 1915 when it was completed. There's even some information on the equitable building around here. Largest office building in the world in 1915. And on the other side you can read some information on 28 Liberty which is to the right of me. Formerly, it was one Chase Manhattan Plaza. 28 Liberty Street was formerly owned by the J.P. Morgan Chase Company. However, in 2013, they sold it to Fozon, a Chinese investment company, for $725 million. And this across the street is the Brown Brothers Harriman building, another big bank. Twenty eight Liberty Street was completed in nineteen sixty one with a total of sixty floors, five basement floors, 
and it is 813 feet tall. It is the 26th tallest building in New York City, the 43rd tallest in the United States, and the 200th tallest building in the world. The Foson Group rebranded 1 Chase Manhattan Plaza as 28 Liberty Street in 2015, primarily because of the east-west street on where the building sits, and it also connects to the Statue of Liberty in the distance, and to the good fortune, meaning that there are two eights in Chinese tradition, which accounts for good luck. This is Liberty Street, and on Liberty Street is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Underneath these streets are tons and tons of gold. Currently, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York is reputedly the largest gold repository in the world. However, this can't be confirmed since Swiss banks don't report their gold stocks. Most of the gold is actually owned by foreign nations. Here is Maiden Lane. It's very interesting if you go to if you go down the street here, you'll see Federal Reserve Police. These are fucking trick questions. They do need security to guard all the gold underneath these streets. As you can see, the financial district is in all banks and uh, financial firms. There's other businesses that have revolved around the, uh, the workers here and also people who live here. It's become more of a residential community. Interestingly enough, you have food establishments, jewelry places. Here's a car greeting store. I mean, think about it. With all these people working here, there's going to be birthdays, so you need birthday cards and other souvenirs. Just imagine a financial district without places to eat or places to shop. It will be a pretty boring place. The financial district also offers a wide variety of foods, everything ranging from fast foods to upscale dining establishments. The World Trade Center is actually about three or four blocks west from here. I just passed some uh, delivery men on bicycles. It's a very efficient way to get food and other deliveries to places quickly here. Just look at the narrow streets, it makes it very challenging for vehicles and uh, cars and other large things to transport around the area. So this is Fulton Street. There's nobody in this truck but I still need to cross the street. There's one World Trade Center, the tallest building in New York City currently, also called the Freedom Tower. Here's a CVS to the right of me. I did get a comment from a subscriber asking if places like CVS, Starbucks, and other fast food restaurants if the prices are consistent throughout New York City and I would say to that yes the prices are pretty consistent throughout the five boroughs and there isn't really too much difference between the prices if any however I do find a big difference between name brand stores and stores selling similar merchandise such as Whole Foods supermarkets 
and comparable supermarkets in neighborhoods such as Chinatown. So let me just say that driving around here is very challenging because the streets are so narrow. Just now we witnessed some honking and some impatient drivers. Here's Beekman Street. There's traffic coming. So I'm just going to tell you a little tip here. It is possible to cross the Brooklyn Bridge if you go to the left and go around, but there's also a way to go under it which is much quicker if you're going to Chinatown you don't have to go on Center Street and come around and get messed up with all the um, all the entrances and everything by the Brooklyn Bridge So this is what I'm talking about. You can cross the street there and then go across the street towards City Hall and then make your way north or you can go this way. As you can see there's no crosswalk here to get to the other side. There's even no pedestrian crossing signs. But there is a way to go underneath it. There's actually two ways. One way is to use the Brooklyn Bridge City Hall subway station underpass that will take you right under the municipal building, the Manhattan municipal building to the distance and then you can walk north from there or you can go this way which is my preferred way which is through Park Row. Park Row recently opened to pedestrian cyclists and other light transportation recently. I believe it was in September of 2018 before Park Row was completely closed to the public due to terrorism con concerns. Park Row goes under the headquarters of the NYPD the one police plaza so there's even signs here there's stairs to the Brooklyn Bridge walkway over here many people don't know that you can actually enter the Brooklyn Bridge from this side So here the city did an interesting thing here with the pedestrian and cycling space. Instead of extending the sidewalk, they just painted, painted a white paint and also added a natural surface to designate pedestrian space. The only vehicles allowed here are VIPs and public buses. Right there was the M9 bus and the M103.
here's a shared space. And very interesting, there's a Vision Zero van right past the shared space. In the shared space, cyclists and pedestrians must share the space. And Vision Zero is the city's plan to reduce traffic fatalities to zero. They've been trying to attempt this by redesigning streets and lowering the speed limit and stepping up enforcement many of the practices are questionable so just above me is the headquarters of NYPD one police plaza It took a while for the city to reopen the space to the public. It was closed for many years after the September 11th, 9-11 uh, attacks, September 11, 2001. Many people were absolutely furious that they closed Park Road to the public because it cut off a vital link between the financial district and Chinatown. So I'm going to turn my camera around. You can't really see one police plaza, the main building, but there's some other smaller buildings that are part of the complex. So in order to get through to those streets by vehicle, there's another checkpoint past the first one, which is on uh, Confucius Plaza up ahead. So there's two sets of gates that you need to drive through in order to get here. getting a little bit breezy but overall it's not too bad So here we are, this is Ch Chinatown. This is one of the busiest areas of Chinatown at Confucius Plaza. It's where Mott Street, Worth Street, Park Row and East Broadway all intersect, as well as Bowery. So many, many different streets from all different angles here. Traffic here can get chaotic at times. They have multiple light cycles and different, different uh, turn signals. 
They even have a traffic agents here all the time to direct people. You see that black vehicle got a little confused because the traffic agent needed to stop stop him in order to let the bus through. So here I am at Confucius Plaza or Kim Lao Square. There's some monuments of note here. This is a monument for the Americans of Chinese ancestry who lost their lives in defense of freedom and democracy. The monument was dedicated in 1962 by the American Legion Lieutenant Ben Ralph Kim Lao Post 1291. And this is a statue of Lin Jeshu, who was one of the leading defenders of China against the Opium Wars. And this statue is facing towards East Broadway. East Broadway is primarily home to Chinese of the Fujianese and Fujonese descent. And this is why the monument is facing towards that street because Lin Jeshu was one of the main people from the region. So this concludes my walk from the financial district to Chinatown. Hope you liked it. Make sure to give it a like, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll check you out next time. Take care.